Davis, and the man who, of course, has got a lot of experience on most other tracks except this one, ironically enough, of course, is the reigning champion of the world, 932, Davy Evans from Northern Ireland. Spends most of his time, of course, racing in Ulster, making visits to the UK for the major events. And that, of course, is where he is at a considerable handicap against the drivers who race on this track week in, week out. One of the men who races just like that, indeed, is 351 Barry Lee, former world champion. At one time or another, he's won most of the top awards in this sport, and he's obviously going to give the rest of the field a good run for their money today. The warming up lap now complete, the control car pulls off, and we're on our way. Unfortunately, a light shower of rain has made it very greasy. 87, John Stone on the inside there. 88, Chris Griggs tucked in behind. They're a little way back at the moment, just picking out one or two. So it's 1, 2, 8, 54, 87. 88, Chris Griggs comes next. Tucked in behind is the number 18 car. And then we go back to 5, 1, 6. 21, 114, 66 and 117. But it's a long race. Further back is 306 George Polly. There's the world champion Davy Evans in 932. Barry Lee is in there just ahead of them there in 351. Nick Cannon in 247. 62 just pushing his way through up on the inside. Malcolm Cheshire from Scotland. Barry Lee's just behind him, just looking for a chance to go through. And that little group of uh, the top men are still some way back. There's 932. There's the world champion, Davy Evans. Just going past the 162 car from Scotland of Malcolm Cheshire. Shooting past the dance in 16. Just trying to, you're sitting in behind at the moment. Positions are still the same up front. 54, Andy Hardy is still the leader. 128, Pete Winston is second. 87, Chris Briggs is second. Number three, Paul Conley comes next. Then 21, Pete Chambers. 114, Colin Tracy.
two are former world champions. And the pressure is on Sean Brown as Barry Lee now moves into second place to challenge Mick Collard in number 19. And still the world champion, still well down the field, still way back. There's a sight we don't often see. Former world champion 306 George Polly, the front of those three, about to be lapped now by the leaders in this race. That's how far George is behind. Sitting there an inch or so, sometimes uh, two inches less than that. That all keeps the pressure on. Mick Collard's got a mirror in there, and he knows that Barry is sitting there just waiting for the slightest slip, for the slightest drift wide, and Barry will be through. But Barry won't be afraid to go past on the outside if he really has to, and indeed, that was it there, the slight mistake. A little bit of a drift on the inside, and in fact, Barry Lee looks if he rather headed for the fence there to chop off Mick Collard. But he's passed. I don't think there was any contact. And he's there. And now he's going to take some beating. Because he's worked his way up from the early stages of the races when he was well down. And we had that blue top 54 car a long way clear. And it really looked as if he was going to run away with it. Barry's worked his way through. And now he's going to be a very, very hard man to beat. Oh, the paint gets scraped as he goes through there. Now he couldn't put himself open to a possible penalty there because he did go right through on the inside there's no doubt about that and he's now got himself wide and upset his line into the corner got himself wide and Mick Collard is back and we've got a scrap on our hands for the remaining nine laps now Collard can't afford to make that mistake that he made a couple of laps ago again because there's not going to be time to get back Collard in 19, Barry Lee in 351, 247, Mick Cannon, the third man now has come to join them. There's a back marker in the first four. Now Barry Lee, is he going to risk it on the outside? The trouble is that the little pieces of shale, of grit, get onto the outside of the track, and the drivers describe it as like driving on marbles. If you just get your back wheels out wide, you lose all your grip, and of course, there's no acceleration off the turn, and worse still, you're likely to drift into the fence. This has been, of course, in a so-called non-contact formula. They go out there and start with beautiful paintwork, and that is how they finish up, because uh, someone has given that door a fairly hefty whack. Barry Lee dropping back a little now. He's going to have to be closing up, because time is running out. That was three to go. And if Barry Lee wants to take this prize, he's got to get up there. 200 pounds to the second, and a 1,200 to the winner. And it looks as if it's going to be that uh, Mick Collard pocket that's going to benefit at the moment if he can just hang on a little longer. Time is now running out for Barry Lee. They're inside the final lap. They're coming to the last turn. The starting marshal has got the checkered flag at the ready, and he's not going to beat him now. It's going to be Mick Collard. What a way to come back to racing after being banned for a year. He's only had a very few races compared with the rest of them and he's now picked up the richest ever prize in hot rod racing number 19 mick collard is the winner there's the man who wasn't quite good enough today three five one barry lee and in third place there he is right behind barry 247 well, mick, a somewhat Cannon. hectic race mick yes it was yes uh, very slippery at the start for people who are running on slick tires some cars had sort of wet tyres, so they had advantage at the start of the race. It must be terrific to come back after that, uh, shall we say, enforced layoff with a, a big a victory like this in the richest ever race. Yes, well, uh, everybody said when there's a few pound notes all ended up in front, uh, I try my little bit hardest, you know, I just come that little bit harder on. Especially when there's 1,200 pounds, I think. <laughs> well, there was a lot of money at stake. Barry Lee, certainly looking by the state of the side of your car, it was a slightly rough race. Yeah, it was rough, because, you know, I had to come right from the back, and I knew that I was going to get going. I knew he was on slick tyres the same as myself, but he didn't have any brakes at all in it, and, you know, they were trying to close down on Collard, and if they missed it, they were hitting me, as you well saw. But I had a very big uh, fortunate luck that the tyre got moved out to the outside of the track and as Mike went round it, he caught it and I managed to nip on the inside of it. That's how I overtook him, but it was a good clean race towards the end. We had a couple of little touches here where he knew if he slipped wide, I was going to go through and I was thinking, well, is he going to slip wide? But he's a crafty old slug. <laughs>